Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in less than lethal self-defense. Guys, I got another new one for you. You know, this market is expanding and it's growing and I, I, I cannot believe how quickly these new launchers are coming out and how quickly these companies are putting them out. But this one, uh, well, let's take a look. Here we go. All right, guys, before we get started on this bad boy, I want to tell you a little something about our friends over at Pava Shot. Now, if you guys remember, we did the video on the NPDD. And in case you forgot about that or you didn't see that video, I'm going to throw a link up here. Guys, it was great. A nitrogen-powered hand grenade for your house. It was great. My only complaint, and I want to show you guys this in my kit. The only complaint that I had on the NPDD was this pin and I'll show you why so if you had the spoon in and you had this down and you had this armed these brass pins are incredibly like you cannot bend that with your fingernail to bend that out to keep this pin from accidentally popping out on you look I called them and I asked them about these brass pins and I said you know you might want something that's a little bit more flexible so that people can bend it out a little bit to prevent those accidental discharges if somebody picks one of these up or sets it down on a nightstand. The next day, I get an email saying, we looked at it, we think you're right. Dude, they sent me an entire new bag full of pins for the NPDDs. Guys, these are made out of what looks like, hang on a second here, they look like they're made out of an alloy, like aluminum. But what's important about them is unlike the brass, these have a little bit of flexibility to them. Check this out. So you can see that? You can actually bend that pin, which means that if you've got your NPDD and you've got your spoon on there mounted and you put your new pin in there like that, now you can bend that back a little bit. You see what I'm saying? Guys, look. Whether you buy an, a, a, an NPDD or you buy a stick shot or you buy a pen shot, go visit our friends at Pava Shot. Man, those guys, they're awesome. And this company, they keep listening and they keep responding. This is what you want in a less than lethal self-defense company. Somebody who's going to listen to what we need and what we want and respond. So FYI. For every NPDD that goes out from now on, I'm going to include the original brass pin because obviously those are in there, but I'm also going to throw in one of these, uh, I, I guess it's aluminum, whatever it is, it's great guys. I really, 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 really like that pin. That is going to be fantastic. So I'm going to throw one of those in the box for you too. So, all right. So back to what we were talking about originally, let me get this out of the way. By the way, that's my personal NPDD. Don't be jealous. All right. At SHOT Show, guys, we went up to a booth called Guard Dog Security. And if you didn't see the SHOT Show video, I'll throw a link up here for you. They were advertising their brand new launcher. Had, in fact, it wasn't even at SHOT Show. The, what they had on their table to demo their brand new launcher, no joke, guys, was an HDP50 with a Guard Dog Security sticker over the T4E. That's what they had. They had an HTP 50 sitting just like this with a guard dog security sticker over the top of it. And I remember talking to the guy, kind of calling him up. I'm like, dude, that's that's a Humorex. And he's like, no, no, no. That's not what we have. It's just to, to kind of demonstrate what it's going to look like. Well, I give you the guard dog fireball pepper ball launcher. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. I know what you're thinking. Stop thinking that. Right now, immediately, stop thinking that. All right, look, I know nothing about this except that they just came out. So let's crack this thing open and see what it, uh, it it's heavy. I'm going to tell you that now. It's at least the same weight as the HTP 50. I think we might know why, but we'll get into that too. So let's crack this open and see what we actually get in the box here. And you got some real nice foam inserts in this, guys. That is kind of nice. Um, all right. I know he told me that this is going to be sold in multiple configurations. So 
This is the base configuration. I bought this, guys. This was not a donation or a sent in from the company. I actually went out and bought this retail so I could show you guys this. Um, but I know they're going to have configurations that have different amounts of pepper balls, uh, kinetic balls, and even some of those practice inert balls in there too. So, But this is the stock version. So let's take the weapon out of there. All right. Um, looks like you also, in the bottom, you get the Allen key right there. So you do have that, which is kind of nice too, although... Guys, you heard me say it a thousand times. Don't over-tighten that Allen key, and I'm sure it's going to apply here, too. Um, Weight-wise, it's almost exactly the same. The grip is completely different than the HTP 50. It's not contoured. In fact, that kind of reminds me of, oh, maybe the early TPM-1 grips. It's comfortable, but it's not contoured. Um, the slide has the exact same loading mechanism that we have on the uh, uh, HTP 50 over there. So you slide this up, lock it into place, and you load in your six rounds from the bottom right there. Pop that down. Just like the HTP 50, you're going to unscrew this. And you're going to put in your CO2 cartridge, and you're going to put it nozzle down this way. And this is the puncture tip on it. Now, guys, one thing I am seeing right off the bat. And this is different. And hopefully I can get Stumpy to focus on that, guys. There is a CO2 restrictor plate in there. Interesting, right? Uh, could it be that they took the best of the HTP 50 and then pulled out the restrictor? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, but it is. It's already pre-installed in there. You can see it looks like it's threaded. So, you know what? <clears throat> I don't want to wait, guys. I want to get this out here and I want to test this. But just to show you side by side, guys. They are, physical dimensions are identical. They are exactly the same size. Um, I, 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 the rounded trigger well is kind of cool. I like that. But side to side, as you can see, they are the exact same size. Front to back, they are the same. There you go. Which to me also means that the disassembly on this is going to be the same as well as the possible upgrades for it because it releases with the exact same pin right there. So, now, one thing I don't see beyond that is you've got, actually, they're identical. Now that I look at this, I was going to say I don't see it, but you have the same pins here. You have the same pins here. One's a little further up, and this one, that's about it. It doesn't have a bottom secure pin like this one does. So, we're going to have to take a look at that. Tell you what, let's go ahead and get a CO2 cartridge in here, and I want to get one test out of the way while we are sitting here at the bench. And that test is the trigger pull. So let me grab one of our CO2 cartridges. And we're going to throw this thing in here. By the way, guys, the instructions do promise six rounds. It's supposed to get 350 to 400 out of the box. We're going to find out that together. All right. So basic instructions, guys, nothing too crazy, exactly like we've used on the HTP 50. And nothing has changed. Now, that does also make me wonder if the uh, uh, quick puncture uh, bottom pieces will actually fit this, the puncture button, but we'll find out. All right. Cracking her open. Putting our CO2 in there. Standard 12-gram CO2 cartridge. Now, one thing I am noticing right off the bat that's a little strange, guys. Um, I don't like the way that handle is designed. Well, it's not the grip so much, but it kind of looks like this is an early... Pr okay, by the way, screw it down until it stops. You don't have to crank this thing down. Um, why they put this cheesy star on it, and, unless maybe that's their logo, but it isn't. Their logo is actually really cool, guys. Take a look at that. Guard Dog Security. Their logo is actually really cool. So I'm not sure why they put the cheesy star on there. They should have put their logo, but, you know, hey, whatever. All right, let's go ahead. While we got this, let's charge it. And you heard that. We've got the exact same charging lever in the back. And let's get our trigger pull. And let's see what kind of tension we have on that trigger. As I recall, the HTP 50 was right in that six pound range. So we're going to be looking for this to be somewhere in that same vicinity. Uh, this trigger is very aggressively placed, guys. It's very, very forward in there. But it does have the drop double trigger safety. So here we go. I'm going to put this in there. And we're going to pull it back together and let's see what we get. All right, 8 pounds, 14 ounces. Go again. That was really light, guys. Let me clear that. Hold on. All right, here we go. 2 pounds, 1 ounce. 
Wow, that first one was very hard, and then it got easier. Let's go again. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Guys, that is really, really light. Hang on. That was four pounds, eight ounces. By the way, somebody asked me if when I was using this, if I was letting it bottom out. Though it kind of looks like it on the camera, I am not actually letting this bottom out. As soon as it releases and releases pressure, I'm stopping um, because I, I want to get some real measurements. But guys, that is, that's a lot lighter than the HTP 50. And the sound almost sounds like a modded version, maybe a little less, but pretty darn close. So let's go ahead. I'm going to empty out this cartridge, but I'm going to listen. Guys, that is, that is super easy. I mean, like, silly easy. Guys, if this thing fires anywhere like they say it does, that trigger pull is, and now you're out. Okay, what was it? Eight to ten shots? This sounds like a modded HTP 50. That's what that sounds like to me. All right, let's release this, and we're going to go out here onto the range, and uh, <clears throat> let's put a couple rounds down range with a brand new CO2. Be right back. All right, guys, so I'm going to try to get behind you here and give you those same shots like we did before. And we are charged up. By the way, that is seems to be pretty darn easy to charge as well. So let me see if I can get us a good shot right off the bat. God, 430. All right, I'm going to take a 430. 418. 411 and 399 okay well um out of the box that has to make you wonder doesn't it tell you what guys um I want to go back here and talk about this for a second. I, there's something about this that I can't quite figure out. Maybe you guys can help me out. Here we go. Guys, let's talk about the Guard Dog Security Fireball. Um, <clears throat> I did a little bit of testing off camera, and I noticed a couple of interesting things about this. Guys, it fires really hard and I mean like right out of the box, which makes me wonder if there's not even a little more wiggle room on the backside. That being said, I ran into a couple of very interesting issues that I wanted to tell you guys about. Now, to load the weapon up, you guys know that you slide this forward, lock it in place, put in your rounds, slide this down, and then start firing. If you loaded the full six rounds, and this happened to me twice, so I know this has to be more than an anomaly. When I would fire the first round, so basically this would be sitting right about there, okay? When you fire the first round, the detent pushes this mechanism forward in order to allow a ball in. When it did it, it had a habit of pushing this back up into a locked position and not allowing the next feed. Now, the other thing that I noticed, and this happened one time, so I'm going to take it as an anomaly. But when I fired it, and we were at uh, the six ball, so this, the carrier was actually about there, so it was below the level. But when I fired it, I got a double shot. And then the next ball rolled out of the front of the barrel. Now, this could be a detent thing. And we're going to disassemble this and see if it actually is. But, guys, uh, here's the kicker. These are cheaper than the HTP 50. And this is their first iteration of them. Which means that if they pay attention and they correct these minor issues, and I suspect that this could be as, as minor as a lubrication issue on that spring to make sure that that guide doesn't push back forward again. That's the whole key. You want it to con constantly push in this direction. And as far as the actual feeder for the, uh, um, uh, the detent in there, I think that maybe the balls I was using might have been a little bit too small, but I need to get in there and micrometer that detent to see how big it is. Uh, it's quite possible. I've seen that on, uh, like, the First Strike Roscoe and a couple of the revolvers. You'll use a 50 caliber round that's labeled 50 caliber when you put it in it just slides right through so some are going to be larger than other ones i'm assuming this one's going to have to use the larger like the rubber steel balls for sure um even the pepper balls might be a little bit small but we'll take a look at that guys hey 
but no matter how you slice it, we got another company, another contender in the market, and they've got a product here that they can now work on to improve, and that's what really counts. Out of the box, there's nothing wrong with it. it. I mean, I wouldn't load it with six rounds. If I had this for personal defense, the house or something, I'd load five rounds in it until I find out what's going on with that spring. But I truly believe that just might be that it was new in the box and that a little bit of lubrication might solve that problem. But we'll look into it. Either way, we're taking it apart. We really are. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Listen, this is important that we are getting new people into this industry. We're getting companies that are coming out with alternative options for people to defend themselves. And we need to support these guys and we need to give them positive feedback so that if, if we notice anything's bad with this, we need to let them know we need to correct this. And I'm going to be talking to them very shortly about this one so that they know what's going on with that feed mechanism. But guys, I really do appreciate it. And, and who knows if they copied the HTP 50. They clearly did. I mean, duh but there's also you know what guys nope it wouldn't i was gonna say it makes me wonder if the speed loader would actually fit that i guess not um on the note of the speed loader guys i made a decision today and for those of you who waited till the end of this video you're going to be the first people to actually hear this decision um anybody that buys an htp 50 speed loader and i don't care if it's the version one two or three you guys have all seen them on the videos um, I am throwing in the punch cap for free from this day forward. Um, I had a whole bunch of these. I was printing on a, a printer. I was working out the minor defects and leveling problems with it. So like on the bottom, it had like a little gap in there or something, but they all work perfectly. So they're all going to go out with one of those for everybody that gets a speed loader from now on. That's my gift to you guys for helping me build this channel the way you have and hope we can continue down this road because I really love this. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.